Welcome to the Female VC Lab podcast. I have Annie here. Annie, in one line, give me your name, your title, and the name of your fund. Hi, my name is Ann Greeny. I am CMO here at Sierra Ventures, and we are an early stage VC firm focused on the future of enterprise. Wonderful. So what inspired you to become a venture capitalist or investor? I was an operator for years. So I've worked in the enterprise and then spent the majority of my career working in early stage. And I love it. I, the the early stage, once I started doing it, I was addicted to it. And that is my favorite. I've had the best memories. I've learned the most. And I was at a stage in my career where I wanted to do more in early stage, but I also wanted a change. And that's where the idea of moving over to the venture side. In my role, CMO is a kind of a silly title. No one really knows what it means in venture, but in my role, I get to wear many hats. We're not a big firm. We're under 20 people. So one of the main roles that I get to do is to lead platform. And what that means at a venture fund like ours is helping out our early stage companies, especially on the operations side, go to market is my passion. So going in and helping them with everything that could possibly they need from everything from launch support to building their first ad campaigns to messaging, positioning, helping them hire their first sales leaders. So it's fun. And I get to be part of several different companies as opposed to just being being in one at a time. It definitely keeps it interesting. Yeah, it does. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned in coming over to venture that I didn't realize is the con- constant context switching where Yes. Every moment is something new. I get to sit on the investment teams at some stage in the day. I'm listening to a founder pitch and the next thing I'm doing, I'm helping someone build a campaign. And the next thing I'm doing is recruiting and the next thing. And then all the different, we invest purely in B2B software, but that can range from climate tech to construction tech to DevOps Mm -hmm. to ed tech and everything in between. And so you've really got to constantly be on top of each meeting and be able to contact switch. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about your investment thesis and the motivation behind that thesis. So as I mentioned, early stage is the passion and that is what we're looking at. So we invest in seed and A stage companies, almost primarily B2B software. And I say that just with an asterisk because we have done a couple deep tech deals. We have one managing partner here that that mm-hmm. does do deep tech, but that isn't my area of forte. Anything that comes in, he invests in all the stuff I can't pronounce. So he, well, that could be a lot, actually. Yeah, that actually is a lot. <laughs> I mean, um, is space like deep tech, it covers many aspects of like, yeah. We've uh, touched very, robotics and all robotics, I mean, it, yeah. mm-hmm. it's fascinating. Quantum, it's as well. That's that one. <laughs> the best part. It's the best part of being on the venture side is you are just constantly learning. And That's so true. for me, it's that part's been fun. But on the thesis, I stick to B2B SaaS. That's where, you know, I grew up and really understood how to learn my function. And those are the numbers I'm comfortable about with. And that's those are the founders that I truly like to vet. And we're looking for exceptional founders that are going out there to build and disrupt. And that's the fun part. Wonderful. So what are you currently reading or learning or listening to these days? Yeah, I try to read a lot and try to digest a lot and from podcasts to books. And a lot of the books sit in, typically sit in like business biographies, just because I find them fascinating. Very fascinating. The book I just finished which was a big one and sits on my nightstand as an actual book is Peter Attia's recent book on called Outlive that's all about longevity. Mm. And I think you get to a stage in your life and you really start thinking about overall health and how to optimize. As a go-to-market leader, everything was about optimizing business, optimizing every campaign. Revenue optimizing, all of it. All yeah. And now you kind of transition in life and you think about how can I optimize my health, my my health span, my longevity and our family and parents. And it's That's funny right. how this really gets ingrained in everything you do in life. It's a book I, I really enjoyed. I listened to his podcast and several others similar to him that he's recommended. And 
yeah, have been able to follow him for years. And yeah, that's the book I just finished. And I highly recommend it for anyone who's concerned with or focused on health and, and health span. So this is the bonus question. Everyone knows it and everyone gets it. <laughs> In two years, how do you see venture capital having changed or evolved? Yeah. And I, you know, it's fascinating to probably to go back through all your podcasts and listen because depending Ooh, that's on... going to be this, that's going to be good. That's coming. Yeah. Be depending prepared on the... for that, everyone. It's coming. <laughs> She's coming. Depending on the, on the weekend. <laughs> the vintage, it changes so much. I joined venture capital in 2021. Okay. And at, at that point, we are at the height of just prices were yes. skyrocketing starting and, to, and starting to make adjustments just barely. Yeah. And then we've seen some, a little bit of a dip, but still the latest AI companies are going. Yeah, the AI, and... AI still has the highest valuations of everyone. And that truly is what's changing the venture industry. And mm -hmm. the thing that I find really interesting is just because now we are able to build companies and founders are able to build companies faster than ever, the rate of acceleration is continuing to grow. And this is mm -hmm. the exciting part, but it's also, as I see it, my, my own opinion, it's also the scary part as a investor, just because you can find this great idea, this company that's solving this incredible early stage problem. And in six months, there could be a whole list of competitors that are out there doing the same thing. So right. building that technical moat is crucial. And then Critical. a little bit of my, my opinion is also the go-to-market. And yes, I'm speaking my own book, but how you, okay, sure. how you actually message, position your product, how you get it out there, how you build that early traction is going to be more important than ever because because yes. if you think that you can build and the ability to build these products is going to be easier than ever because of the tools and capabilities and data and technology that we have at our fingertips, then how you get out there and how you sell is going to be crucial. <laughs> and so that's where I see things head in and how the market will change a little bit. And I think yes, that's a good point, right? How are we utilizing as venture capitalists, these tools? And I'm building some tools as well. I guess I'll make that announcement at the end, but <laughs> Barb is yeah. busy on the weekend building tools, but are we going to be utilizing these tools as well for ourselves? Right. We, it, yeah. it's not just from a startup perspective, right? We also have to look at it from our own efficiency perspective because these tools are, we're funding these tools. But then also, how are we utilizing these tools to make ourselves more efficient and effective as well? Yeah, absolutely. And that's it's something we're doing here. We luckily mm -hmm. have a data scientist on staff that that helps quite a bit. But there's so many options that are available that even low code, no code options to be able to that's help us get started, right? Yeah, help us move faster, help us expand our reach, and even that's just right. get organized in that process. So yeah, I think it's exciting. I think it's going to be a fun next couple of years in, in the venture industry. I'm sure things will change quite a bit as they always have. But yeah, we're definitely optimistic on our side. All right. So how do people contact you? Yeah, so you can connect or follow on LinkedIn, on Twitter, my detached or my or an X now, I guess we're calling it X, X old X. habits. I'm at Annie G. And, and you can follow me on uh, LinkedIn as well and check out sierraventures.com. And we've got a bunch of information. We build a lot for our founders in our, what we call our Ascend section, which is portfolio resources. Yeah. That's we'd nice. love to connect with everyone and gain any feedback. All right. Thank you so much. And Greeny from Sierra Ventures for being my 